Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 27th of February. It's been a fairly tough week for markets and some of the shine has been coming off what was a very good start to the year. Markets do generally remain in positive territory, but the persistent concerns around exactly where we are on the interest rate hiking cycle, particularly in the US, are ones which are very much at the forefront of investor minds. Whereas some of the more optimistic investors had been hoping even for rate cuts uh, by the end of 2023, that's look, looking less and less likely. We've still got a jobs market, which is holding up, and some sticky inflation. And of course, the Federal Reserve has been saying the whole way through that it's uh, very much of the opinion it will keep interest rates as high as necessary to combat inflation, and that if necessary, those rates will be higher for longer. If that is the case, and equity markets have been overpricing um, such a, an end to the rate hiking cycle, of course, we could see that uh, expectations for company earnings also need to come down so what, so, somewhat. So it's, it's a fairly tricky time at the moment. As I say, most markets do remain in positive territory. The Dow Jones in the year to date is actually now flat and totally unchanged. But the S&P 500 is still up by 4.5%. NASDAQ continues some of its recovery. It's up by 10.7%. And the FTSE 100 is up by 6.4%. Turning to next week, an extremely busy week of UK company earnings, particularly in the FTSE 100. Uh, we've got a trading update from Associated British Foods, whose shares have managed to eke out a gain of just 0.5% in the last year. Of course, for AB Foods, uh, the diversity of its business model very much saw it through the pandemic, through its grocery, ingredients, agriculture and sugar businesses. But of course, the main business and around half of revenues comes from its Primark offering. Primark has very much benefited more recently on a couple of fronts, not only the return to physical shopping, uh, around the Christmas period, but also, of course, its pricing structure and the fact that it is at the rather more value end. Both of those things have worked into its favour. It'll also be interesting to see what updates uh, we're given on its current US expansion. Full year numbers from Ocado. Shares are down by 52%. Over the last year, this, of course, is split into two parts. Ocado Retail, uh, it's got its own offering as well as the joint venture with Marks and Spencer. And of course, when we mention pricing, these two brands tend to be at the upper end of the range, which has tended to work um, against them, notwithstanding they had a reasonable Christmas. But it's the solutions business, the robotic end to end delivery system where the uh, stock really needs to show some further progress before it actually becomes one of these jam tomorrow stocks. And, and that's unfortunately a, a label which has been following Ocado as seen by the share price. So in terms of any new deals or new deals in the pipeline, that's something w which investors would receive rather more warmly. There's also full year numbers from Flutter Entertainment, shares up about 34% over the last year. This is the company which has brands under its belt such as Paddy Power and Betfair but perhaps most excitingly it's also got a, a fan dual brand in the US which is doing particularly well market leading in most of the states uh, in which it operates in the US uh, and of course the overall picture of any large sporting events is also something which plays into Flutter's hands so it should be an interesting update. And in terms of the rest of the corporate earnings, um, there are also full year numbers to look out for from Persimmon, Reckitt Benkiser, Taylor Wimpy and ITV. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.